A 32-year-old female, presents to the clinic with complaints of a swollen neck and difficulty swallowing. Upon assessment, the nurse notes an enlarged thyroid gland? The client's history reveals a lack of iodine intake in her diet. The nurse suspects the client is experiencing a goiter. Which nursing intervention should the nurse prioritize for this client? A. Administering a high dose of iodine supplement orally. B. Monitoring vital signs and providing respiratory support. C. Initiating thyroid hormone replacement therapy. D. Educating the client about a low iodine diet. The correct answer is. D. Educating the client about a low iodine diet. Explanation. Goiter is often asked about on the NCLEX. A goiter can develop due to iodine deficiency, so educating the client about a low iodine diet is essential. Iodine is necessary for thyroid hormone synthesis, and a low iodine diet can help reduce the size of the goiter. Administering a high dose of iodine supplement may cause further thyroid dysfunction and is not recommended without proper evaluation. Monitoring vital signs and providing respiratory support is important for clients with a large goiter that causes respiratory distress, but the priority is to address the underlying cause. A 42-year-old female, with a history of untreated hyperthyroidism, presents to the emergency department in a state of severe agitation, confusion, and hyperthermia. The nurse suspects the client is experiencing a thyroid storm. Which clinical manifestations should the nurse expect to assess in a client with thyroid storm? Select all that apply. A. Bradycardia. B. Hypothermia. C. Profuse sweating. D. Hypotension. E. Restlessness. The correct answer is. C. Profuse sweating and E. Restlessness. Explanation. Thyroid storm is a life-threatening condition that requires immediate nursing intervention, so you will be asked about it. Thyroid storm is characterized by an excessive release of thyroid hormones. Profuse sweating is a common manifestation of thyroid storm as the body tries to dissipate excess heat generated by increased metabolism. Restlessness and agitation are frequently observed due to the sympathetic overactivity associated with thyroid storm. Bradycardia, Hypothermia, and hypotension are not typical findings in thyroid storm, as the condition is characterized by an overactive sympathetic response, resulting in tachycardia, hyperthermia, and hypertension. A 46-year-old male is admitted to the medical surgical unit with a diagnosis of hyperthyroidism. On physical examination, the nurse notes a visible swelling in the anterior neck area. The client reports weight loss, heat intolerance, and tremors. The nurse suspects the client has a goiter related to hyperthyroidism. Which nursing intervention is the most appropriate for this client? A. Providing a high-calorie, high-protein diet. B. Encouraging rest and promoting energy conservation. C. Administering propranolol to control tachycardia. D. Educating the client about a high iodine diet. The correct answer is. C administering propranolol to control tachycardia. Explanation, in hyperthyroidism, clients often experience increased sympathetic stimulation, leading to tachycardia. Administering a beta blocker such as propranolol helps control the heart rate and other symptoms associated with sympathetic overactivity. Providing a high-calorie, high-protein diet is appropriate for clients with hyperthyroidism to meet increased metabolic demands, but it is not the most appropriate intervention for addressing the goiter. Encouraging rest and promoting energy conservation is important, but it is not the priority intervention for managing a goiter. Educating the client about a high iodine diet is contraindicated in hyperthyroidism as it may worsen the condition. A 60-year-old female is being evaluated for potential thyroid dysfunction. The nurse reviews the client's laboratory results and notes a decreased level of free thyroxine, T4, and an elevated level of thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH. Based on these findings, what interpretation should the nurse make? A. The client has hypothyroidism. B. The client has hyperthyroidism. C. The client has euthyroidism. D. The client has secondary adrenal insufficiency. The correct answer is. A. 
the client has hypothyroidism. Explanation In hypothyroidism, there is a decrease in the production of thyroid hormones. This is reflected in the decreased level of free thyroxine, T4. In response to low thyroid hormone levels, the pituitary gland releases increased amounts of thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, to stimulate the thyroid gland. Therefore, an elevated TSH level is commonly seen in primary hypothyroidism. The other options are not consistent with the laboratory findings described. A 35-year-old male with a history of Graves' disease is undergoing treatment for hyperthyroidism. The nurse reviews the client's laboratory results and notes an elevated level of total triiodothyronine, T3. What interpretation should the nurse make based on these findings? A. The client's treatment for hyperthyroidism is effective. B. The client's treatment for hyperthyroidism needs adjustment. C. The client has developed secondary hypothyroidism. D. The client has developed thyroid storm. The correct answer is B. The client's treatment for hyperthyroidism needs adjustment. Explanation Elevated levels of total triiodothyronine, T3, in a client undergoing treatment for hyperthyroidism suggest that the current treatment plan may not be adequately suppressing thyroid hormone production. T3 is an active form of thyroid hormone, and elevated levels indicate continued hyperthyroidism. Therefore, the client's treatment may need adjustment to achieve better control of thyroid hormone levels. The other options are not consistent with the laboratory findings described. Secondary hypothyroidism and thyroid storm would not be characterized by elevated T3 levels. A 62-year-old female is admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. The nurse notes a visibly enlarged thyroid gland during the physical examination. The client reports fatigue, weight gain, and constipation. The nurse suspects the client has a goiter related to hypothyroidism. Which nursing intervention should the nurse include in the plan of care for this client? A. Encouraging a diet high in iodine-rich foods. B. Administering levothyroxine as prescribed. C. Teaching the client deep breathing and coughing exercises. D. Assisting the client with regular exercise routines. The correct answer is. B. Administering levothyroxine as prescribed. Explanation. Hypothyroidism often requires thyroid hormone replacement therapy with levothyroxine. Administering levothyroxine helps restore thyroid hormone levels, which can help reduce the size of the goiter and alleviate symptoms. Encouraging a diet high in iodine-rich foods is not appropriate for hypothyroidism-related goiter as it is caused by a deficiency of thyroid hormone, not iodine. Teaching the client deep breathing and coughing exercises and assisting with regular exercise routines are important for overall health promotion but are not specific interventions for managing a goiter. A 38-year-old female is diagnosed with Graves' disease, an autoimmune disorder affecting the thyroid gland. She presents to the clinic with symptoms of hyperthyroidism, including weight loss, palpitations, and tremors. The nurse prepares to administer medication to manage her condition. Which medications are commonly prescribed for the treatment of Graves' disease? Select all that apply. A. Methimazole. B. Levothyroxine. C. Propranolol. D. Prednisone. The correct answer is. A. Methimazole and C. Propranolol Explanation Methimazole is an antithyroid medication commonly prescribed for Graves' disease. It inhibits the synthesis of thyroid hormones, thereby reducing hyperthyroid symptoms. Propranolol, a beta blocker, is often prescribed to manage cardiovascular symptoms such as tachycardia and palpitations associated with hyperthyroidism. Levothyroxine is a thyroid hormone replacement medication used for hypothyroidism, not for the treatment of hyperthyroidism. Prednisone, a corticosteroid, may be used in certain cases of Graves' disease with severe ophthalmic involvement but is not a first-line treatment for hyperthyroidism. 8. A 25-year-old male with Graves' disease is scheduled for a radioactive iodine therapy procedure. The nurse is providing pre-procedure education to the client. Which instructions should the nurse include in the teaching? 
select all that apply. A. Instruct the client to avoid close contact with pregnant women for one week after the procedure. B. Inform the client that he will need to follow a low iodine diet prior to the procedure. C. Explain that the client may experience a temporary exacerbation of hyperthyroid symptoms. D. Advise the client to continue taking antithyroid medications after the procedure. The correct answer is A. Instruct the client to avoid close contact with pregnant women for one week after the procedure and C. Explain that the client may experience temporary exacerbation of hyperthyroid symptoms. Explanation After radioactive iodine therapy, the client may emit radiation for a short period. Instructing the client to avoid close contact with pregnant women helps protect the developing fetus from potential harm. The administration of radioactive iodine may cause a temporary increase in hyperthyroid symptoms before the desired therapeutic effect occurs, so informing the client about this possibility is important. Following a low iodine diet is typically required before radioactive iodine therapy but is not specific to pre-procedure teaching. Antithyroid medications are typically discontinued before radioactive iodine therapy, so advising the client to continue taking them after the procedure is incorrect. A 55-year-old male with a history of Graves' disease presents to the emergency department with complaints of eye discomfort and protrusion of both eyes. The nurse notes bilateral exophthalmus upon assessment. Which nursing intervention should the nurse prioritize for this client? A. Administering corticosteroids to reduce inflammation. B. Elevating the head of the bed to promote venous return. C. Providing artificial tears to alleviate dryness and irritation. D. Assessing visual acuity and visual field changes. The correct answer is. C. Providing artificial tears to alleviate dryness and irritation. Explanation, exophthalmus, or protrusion of the eyes, is a characteristic feature of Graves' disease. It is often accompanied by dryness and irritation of the eyes. Providing artificial tears helps lubricate the eyes and alleviate discomfort. Administering corticosteroids may be part of the treatment plan for reducing inflammation, but it is not the priority intervention for immediate symptom relief. Elevating the head of the bed helps promote venous return and reduce periorbital edema but is not specifically targeted at managing exophthalmus. Assessing visual acuity in visual field changes is important, but providing immediate relief for the discomfort caused by dryness and irritation takes priority. A 42-year-old female is scheduled for orbital decompression surgery due to severe exophthalmus associated with Graves' disease. The client expresses concerns about the cosmetic appearance of her eyes after the surgery. How should the nurse respond to the client's concerns? A. The surgery will improve the cosmetic appearance of your eyes and reduce the protrusion. B. Cosmetic appearance is not a priority concern in the treatment of Graves' disease. C. The surgery will correct the protrusion, but the cosmetic outcome varies among individuals. D. Don't worry about the cosmetic appearance. The focus is on managing your thyroid function. The correct answer is C. The surgery will correct the protrusion, but the cosmetic outcome varies among individuals. Explanation Orbital decompression surgery is performed to alleviate symptoms and reduce the protrusion of the eyes in exophthalmus associated with Graves' disease. While the primary goal of the surgery is to improve symptoms, the cosmetic outcome can vary depending on the individual and the extent of the condition. It is important to provide the client with realistic expectations regarding the outcome of the surgery. Dismissing the client's concern about cosmetic appearance is not therapeutic. Although managing thyroid function is a critical aspect of Graves' disease treatment, addressing the client's concerns about cosmetic appearance is also important for psychosocial well-being.